and welcome to this episode of John's Motorcycle Rescue and Review. Today I'm going to be showing you how to service a Kawasaki ZRX motorcycle. And this is appropriate for the ZRX 1100 and the ZRX 1200. There's really basically no differences in the service. And I just picked up this machine so I want to go over it. I want to make sure this thing is safe to ride. I want to make sure that the controls are all set to factory specs so that uh, it's safe to ride. The tires, we're going to look at those. We're going to look at the chain. We're going to do an engine oil and filter change. We're also going to look at the, all the fluids in the bike, make sure that they're up to spec. And uh, again, the purpose of this is every time I buy a bike, I want to make sure that it is 100% safe to ride before I get out on the road and start ripping it up. So enough talk, let's get to work. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to do is check the lights around the bike to make sure that everything functions as it should for safety and visibility. So I can see now my running lights in the front are working. My right signal works. My left turn signal works. I'll start the bike to check the headlight. Low beam works. High beam works. Okay, looking here, we can see that our tail light is working. Check the brake lights. Front brake works. Rear brake works. Check the turn signals. That one works. That one works. And we'll check our horn. So all of those things function as they should. We'll go to the next system. The next thing we're gonna do is look at the front wheel and tire. We're also gonna look at the brakes and the front suspension as well. So a couple things that we're gonna need here. I've got a tread depth gauge. I've also got a good quality air pressure gauge. First thing that we're going to do is look at the brake pad thickness. And I'm gonna just do a visual check on both sides. And then I'm also going to look in here and measure the brake pad thickness. Brake pad thickness is right at 530 seconds. And it's at 530 seconds on both the outside of the pad and the inside, and it's that on the on both calipers. So those look good. We're also gonna look at our tread depth. And here we have 430 seconds on our front tire tread depth. I don't see any dry rod on this tire. It looks good. And then the next thing we're going to do is check the valve stems. I'm going to visually inspect them while leaning them over for any cracks in the valve stem itself. Those look good. Tire pressure. I want to check and make sure that it's 36 PSI in the front. This bike takes 36 PSI front and 42 PSI in the rear. Perfect, 36 PSI. When I test drove this bike, I also was checking out the braking system. And so while it's not uncommon for the ZRXs to ride before you come to a stop, they give a little bit of squeal from the front brakes. That's a common thing. Everyone I've had has done that. So if your bike squeals a little bit, like right as you're coming up to a stop, it's not a big deal. That's a common ZRX. It's just a thing they do. There's nothing wrong with the brakes. But I check, there's no warpage at higher speeds. The bike brakes solidly like it should. I'm looking at the fork seals now. Fork seals look good. Again, when I test drove the bike prior to purchasing it, I made sure there wasn't any looseness in the suspension, everything felt tight. And so that looks good. Everything looks good here on the front wheel. We'll move now to the back wheel. Just a quick note on the rear tire. When I was cleaning the chain, I noticed a couple areas of dry rot between the uh, treads of the tire. And they were on the kickstand side, so I didn't see it when I looked the bike over. Didn't really anticipate that cost, but just to be safe, I put a brand new uh, Dunlop GPR 300 tire on the back here. So that is good to go. And once I've installed it, I also double checked the air pressure and that's set at 42 PSI. And the 
ZRX. Man, these are super handy. All you do is pull these clips out. They're very easy. You just put a screwdriver here, pop these out on each side, and you've got an axle retaining nut here, and you just hold the axle with the other side and pop that nut off and the whole axle slides out. You don't have to adjust the chain, you don't have to mess with anything other than that, and it's just super easy. And it's just little touches like this that make this ZRX so nice to work on and just really nice to own and just such a nice quality bike. And then I'm going to visually inspect the valve stem here. I'm gonna look, bend it over, look for any dry rot cracks in here. And do the same thing on the other side. If you lose one of these, it can be catastrophic. I have lost a valve stem. I had a valve stem blow out on me at about 70 miles an hour. And fortunately, I was able to get the bike stopped and uh, make, it, make it about a mile to the place where I was going. And, uh, but I, I could have wrecked the bike and it could have been pretty bad. So I always check the valve stems now. Another thing, don't ever run like these lights on here because that puts pressure on your valve stems. The one that blew out on me had a like a metal skull on the valve stem. I didn't put it there, the previous owner had. And, and what happened was that weight just continually bent it over under high speed and caused that valve stem to fail. So check your valve stems every time you service a bike. It's just a critical safety thing. And if they go, your tire pressure goes from, you know, whatever it's set at to zero, uh, it, it takes maybe five seconds. So they, they go flat real, real fast. Next thing I'm gonna check is your rear brake pads. And those are right at 3.30 seconds. So that's good. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is check the chain tension. And I have checked it. I've actually got it at the tightest spot on the chain and it's about one inch uh, up and down. And so I'm gonna adjust it a little bit tighter. This chain actually they recommend being between 0.6 inches and one inch. So it's just at the looser end. I'm gonna tighten it just a bit. Now this Kawasaki has a great tightening system. On each side you have the same setup. You've got an eccentric and then you have this pinch bolt. So I have loosened the pinch bolt on both sides and I'm going to rotate this backwards just a bit. on this side and it doesn't take much. So I'm gonna go there. And see it loosened up. So I'm actually going to use two different wrenches so I can hold it in place at the same time. So I started off right about here and it was a little loose. So I'm gonna go just a hair further and I'm looking at this notch and this right here. So I wanna just start there and then I'll do that on both sides and then I'm gonna check my tension. So the notch is the same on both sides. This was my tightest spot. So I'm gonna look. Okay, so we've got it. It's about 0.8 inches at the tightest spot. And there's really not a whole lot of variation between the tightest spot and the loosest spot on the chain. So that is perfect. I'm gonna double check and make sure that the pinch bolts are tightened down properly. I'm just gonna clean the chain with some WD-40 here. Uh, just put a little bit on there and then I'm going to brush it off.
Now that the chain is clean, I'm going to lube it with some Maxima chain wax. And it's just what I use. I know everybody has their favorite chain lube, so please feel free to use whatever you so desire. Here's the Maxima chain wax that I use. Okay, the chain is lubricated. Last thing I'm gonna do is just kind of wipe things down here, clean up any excess chain lube. And next thing we're going to look at is the rear suspension. And this bike has the external shock. So we're looking here, we wanna see if there's any like uh, oil leaking out, there is none. We'll check the other side. And as you can see, everything is dry there. Just a little bit of dust, but nothing on there i also checked when i test drove the bike and the rear suspension functions as it should as i ride it i may go in and tweak the settings a little bit but i'm not going to get into that in this video just underneath the right side cover here we have the rear brake master cylinder and we're going to check the fluid level and to do that i'm going to stand the bike upright and pull it towards me here And that's about upright and we can see it's between the upper and lower level and for right now that's okay this is where we check it but in another video i'm going to be replacing the fluid in this but for now that's good and that's how you check the rear brake fluid level the next thing i'm doing here is checking the air filter on the zrx and honestly it looks just about new i don't see any real debris in there and it is just behind a cover underneath the seat. So we'll put that back in. It's just two 10 millimeter uh, bolts holding that in. You wanna make sure when you put this air filter back in that you get these tabs in the correct slot right down here. And if you don't, the bike will run lean and you will know it because it won't run right down low. But it's, it's very straightforward. Okay, while I had everything off here, I removed this lower cover also. That just pulls out, that's the battery cover. And I checked my battery connection, made sure that both the positive and negative are tight. It does have a uh, battery tender lead on it already. And so I'll make sure the battery has a full charge and then we'll check the charging system once the bike is up to temperature. All right, with the bike warmed up, Charging at idle, it's about 14.75 volts. And I'm going to rev it up and just double check the voltage when it's revved up. So it looks like the charging voltage is a little bit higher than what I'm used to seeing, it's it's between 14.7 uh, and 14. Point, uh, I guess 8 volts, and I will double check with Kawasaki to see if that is within spec, if they see that normally on these. But it's just something uh, I'll double check. Next thing we're going to look at is the controls here, and this is the brake and throttle controls. And so what I've done, I've set my lever here at two and the brake action feels good and it fits my hands well and you can adjust these very easily you can kind of pull the lever out a little bit with your palm and then just rotate these you don't really want to do it while you're driving but the arrow lines up with the number again i like mine on two that fits my hands well so on the throttle tension i have reset it so i have just a little bit of play there not much at all before it starts to open things up and the adjustment for that is under here you just break this loose and then you can turn this in or out that might actually be a little bit on the tight side so i'm going to turn it in just a hair and then what i'll do is start the bike up and make sure as i turn the bike from lock to lock either side I wanna make sure that it doesn't pick up revs uh, because that would be too tight and that would cause, you could cause an accident that way. So I'll do that before I actually ride the bike. 
And to check the brake fluid level, we're gonna stand the bike upright. You can see right there. When I do that, the brake fluid level is where it should be. We're gonna move over to the clutch side. Again, I have set this to number two. And the clutch fluid level is right here. And I'm also gonna stand the bike upright. And when I do, I can see that the clutch level is where it should be. I will go ahead, I'm not gonna do it in this video, but I'm going ahead and I'm going to bleed out the clutch fluid and also the brake fluid. They both take the dot four fluid. Right here while I'm uh, in here at the controls, last thing I wanna do is double check. These are 10 millimeter bolts holding this handlebar on. And so I have gone ahead and retorqued these, made sure they're nice and tight. The last thing you would want is that handlebar moving around while you're riding the bike. So we have got the controls set where I want them. They're good, and we'll move on to the next item. Next thing I'm gonna check is the coolant level, and it is right here where the light is shining. There is a tank, and it's got the upper and lower levels there. And what you do is you stand the bike upright, and it should be close to the top level here. And when I did, I, I checked it, I stood the bike upright and looked, shook it a little bit, and you could see the coolant sloshing around right at the top line. And you wanna do this when the bike is cool before you start it up. So I have done that, the coolant looks good. I just went for a ride to warm the fluids up and get it ready to change the oil. And what I'm gonna do right now, after the bike is warm, I'm going to check two things while it's running. I'm going to check and make sure the fan turns on and then off again. And then I will do the oil change. So I'm waiting right now for the fan to kick on. So the fan just kicked on. I'll wait a couple minutes and see if it kicks off again. And the fan just kicked off. So the fan is functioning properly. Okay, underneath the bike, we have two 17 millimeter drain bolts. One is here, and one is here, and your oil filter is up underneath this cover. So we'll go ahead and pull those. Okay, I'm using a Kawasaki OEM filter, and really the only critical thing that we're gonna do here as we're putting the filter back in is we're going to make sure that we have our spring in the bottom then we have a little metal washer here this thing often goes missing and then we put the oil filter on there and the cover on here you want to make sure everything is clean and it is and so we're going to go ahead and reinstall this up under the bike and it's a little bit difficult under there i don't know why the exhaust is as close as it is, um, but you kind of have to finagle it a little bit when you get it uh, started up underneath the bike, but it'll eventually, everything will seat up in there. And then we'll also reseat our drain bolt and start to fill the bike with oil. Everything has been reseated and torqued down and we're ready to put oil in the bike. All right, this bike takes 3.2 quarts with an oil and filter change and we're going to use Kawasaki's 10W40 just a Kawasaki brand motorcycle oil and I've noticed it it actually I like this brand because it seems to maintain shift quality uh, over the course of the oil change so I like it but again feel free to use uh, whichever brand you want as long as it's motorcycle specific uh, 10w40 or thereabouts there's there's some ranges but you can check your uh, owner's manual for that all right once the engine has been started I finalize the oil level and then to check the oil level it's right down here in the sight glass and when the bike is level it is right at the top line so that is perfect and that completes the oil change 
Okay, that concludes our service of Kawasaki's ZRX1200. And this is a 2002 model, but as I said before, it's going to be the, basically the same service for all the ZRX 1100 and 1200 models. So I hope you found this video informative and entertaining. And until next time, enjoy the ride.